UN officials believe reversing the findings will require more than 100 developing and non-developed nations to work together. John Englander is an oceanographer and expert on climate change and has written two books on the subject. John, uh, we heard the author say not too late, but what kind of action would it require? Well, they're calling for dramatic change in our effect on the environment and the way we value the environment or consider it in our policies. We're, um, we're looking at the rapid extinction of a million species, as they said, out of the eight million species estimated to currently exist on Earth. Uh, we're making improvements, but not quickly enough. Some pretty startling numbers. What was your first reaction when you uh, heard of this report and its findings? It was, uh, as with most of these reports, it was confirming what we suspected. It was um, nice to have some thorough analysis and, and solid numbers, but uh, very alarming. We're, we're headed in a bad direction. So how can we get every country on the same page in tackling this issue? Um, we saw what has happened with the Paris Climate Accord, and even that was uh, pretty tough. But given what all those countries signed, would that have been enough? No, that would not have been enough, Lane. We, it was a good start. It was uh, an interesting new protocol that many of us thought had promise, but even it was just the first step. Once it was uh, implemented and um, by the, all the major nations, we would have had to do more, but we thought that it was a good place to start. But of course, the U.S. has announced that they don't intend to stay in it, which is a problem. Um, but even as uh, defined, and even if the U.S. had stayed in, it still would not achieve the goals. So are you, uh, is there any hope at all, I guess, of, of seeing uh, the world turn this around? There's always hope, and there has to be hope. And, but we also have to realize what's at risk and not take it for granted or be sanguine about uh, that, that we're on a good path. We are, we are like an individual who hasn't taken care of themselves for many decades and is overweight and doesn't exercise and um, you know, has some health risks and may not live to see their grandchildren. But even that individual can begin a new path and do better. And that's kind of where the world is at the moment, with nearly 8 billion people headed to 10 billion, using more resources every year, species going extinct. Um, we have to be more aggressive about the solutions and the, the changes, of course. It's encouraging some of the newer generation. The, uh, the young lady from Sweden, Greta Thunberg, uh, you know, is articulating what lots of young people believe that we need to um, get much more aggressive, and I think that's encouraging. And not to end on a negative note, but what is the worst case scenario uh, here for people that just really need a, a little shock? Um, what is the eventual impact on humans? Well, uh, complexity in an ecosystem is stability. And if we are about to lose a, a million out of eight, um, million species, that should be a wake-up call. But what's at stake is our survival, our ability to feed ourselves and sustain the kind of lifestyle we have. We've already eliminated about 40% of the forests. Uh, half the world's coral reefs are dead or dying and uh, not headed in a good place at all. So what's at stake here for us is our quality of life, our ability to feed ourselves, to provide fresh water and to have all the products we get from nature, from lumber to fish to uh, uh, raised animal life and plants and vegetables, that all depends upon a stable ecosystem. And uh, we need better ways to regulate that and to price the value of nature so that we take it into our con economic consideration. All right, John Englander in Florida. Thank you so much. We appreciate it.